everybody. Welcome back to Just Shy. I am shy the person, not the adjective. And today I have some fresh, juicy new content for you guys. So um, recently my collections have been expanding like crazy. I've picked up new groups. I've started collecting more members of groups that have already been standing for a while and it's just been so much and like I would consider myself an aesthetic collector so I want all of my collections to look really beautiful um, and of course complete but like that's the ever going quest. Um, but I just have not had the time or motivation to be honest to sit down and decorate for all of my groups. So I have decided to start this series on my channel. We're gonna call it Deco with Shy. So um, mostly you won't hear from like me directly, but I'll be like decoing something. I'm gonna try to do cover pages for all my groups and then of course binder cover pages for my Hold on, I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine binders that I have. Nine full binders that I have. Um, but today is special because I am, of course, starting a mini binder. So um, if you don't know, I collect 80s. 80s is like my main collection. I collect the most for them, which is why they are four out of my nine binders. We're not talking about that. Um, actually five. I forgot they have a separate larger inclusions, but this is a lot. Okay. But so ATs is my main collection and um, I am an OT8 collector and I try to collect OT8 for as many things as humanly possible within reason but recently they've been doing like 47 fan signs for era and i did collect ot8 everything for fever 2 if you've seen this video but that was a lot that was genuinely a lot and i do not recommend anybody ever do that but like yes so um, I decided after Fever Era was done that I wanted to just collect um, the pre-order cards, fan sign cards, whatever comes out for just one member. And that is my ult of ults. I ult him over literally everybody else in the entire K-pop industry. This man right here, Kim Hong Joon. I have this little picture of him. Like, isn't this so cute? So I will be making a mini binder for him today. Um, I'm not gonna put any cards in it today. That's gonna be in my storing PCs vid. This is just gonna be another binder that's gonna be in those videos. But I will be setting up his binder today um, and decoing it, which is the series. So let me go over everything that I bought for him. Okay, so first things first, um, his binder that I bought, it is a, that is upside down. It is a six ring A5 binder. I bought it off of Mochi Things. Most of this stuff I got off Mochi Things. Um, this is an archive brand binder and I got it because it's zippered. So let's open it. So this is what the binder looks like. It's clear front and back and it is sparkly, like holographic sparkly. But what I like is that it is zippered um, because I, I don't really like the ones that just have the little band, especially because I'm planning to collect a lot of his rarer things that I couldn't collect for him because I had to collect OT8. So I had to sacrifice some of the more rare things that I did want to get for him. So now that I'm going to go back and start collecting things like his broadcast cards, which if you don't know, AT's broadcast cards are insanely expensive. Most of them are like 150 to 200 each US American dollars. <laughs> so like they are not cheap by any means and I don't want them to just be in like a flimsy binder that they could just like fly out. <laughs> I know like probably nobody's collection has ever flown out of an A5 binder, but like I have that fear, I'm irrational. So I did wanna get something zippered for him. Um, I did like research binders for quite a long time before I settled on this one. Um, I liked the, 
uh, color of it, of course, because it's pastel pink. And then I also still wanted something see-through, so that way I could deco a cover for him and like see it through the thing. But yes, this is what it looks like. I think it is super duper cute. And this is what we are gonna be working with. Now, I got this. This is a cherry blossom covered also from Mochi Things. This is a hard, um, they call it a front and back cover. There's two of them in here. And it's just like a harder cover to put in the front to give more stability to the binder because the, this one is quite flimsy. So I'm not gonna be decoing directly on top of this. I'm actually going to be using this. This is like binder pages, like A5 binder pages. Um, but it was the color scheme I wanted, the blue um, to pink, and it has like this weird like play skip. I don't know, we might cover that, we might not, we'll see. Um, but I'm actually gonna be like gluing this onto here so that way I can have this color scheme, but like a, a hard backing to it, you know, you know? So that's what we're gonna be doing with that. And then also I figured I could um, cut these in half and split them and use them as fillers since they are the perfect size for this binder. So that way I can have aesthetic fillers for this binder as well if I decided that I wanted to, to put fillers in here. Still not sure, never had an A5 binder. We're, we're working it out. Next up are the pockets that I will be using. So because I use Dragon Shield, I use these Dragon Shield and I love them. I didn't want to switch to the Japanese ones. So I did go ahead and buy the Amifa pockets, which do fit um, full size Dragon Shield, which means they would fit like Ultra Pro and whatever. whatever. They fit standard size um, card sleeves in here. So um, I wanted to go ahead and pick these up. That way I didn't have to like start buying a whole new set of um, card sleeves and everything like that. So I have this many. Like I went ham on the Okio. They weren't too expensive. Um, I got them through the Japanese proxy. They weren't too expensive. I'm pretty sure it was like a 10 pack for like $15 or something like that. And each 10 pack has 10 pages so I got 100 pages for like 15 bucks and these are um, double sided so you can store four cards on the front four cards on the back so each of these pages is kind of like an eight pocket page and it's not there's like actually an opening on the back side too so it's not like the cards are touching or anything like that or rubbing against each other or anything it's actually made to store double sided so I thought that was nice that if I wanted to do that, I have the option in case I need more space because again, with 47 fan signs per era, like a mini binder is gonna fill up really, really quickly. So I wanted to make sure I had enough pages to do whatever it is that I want to do. And then I also just got one pack of one pocket pages and two pocket pages, A5 size. He does have some rare uh, postcards and little stuff as well, but not a whole lot of it. So I just bought one pack of these each for whatever I come across. Cause there are like, I think two broadcast postcards per member. So if I pick those up, they'll fit in one of these, but for the most part, I'm still gonna be collecting OG8 for most things. So I can't foresee that I'm gonna need a whole lot of these. So I only pick up, picked up one each and then for the actual deco stuff I did buy these stickers you can't see them super duper well but this is like holographic pink to blue ombre stars and then these ones are in the same design but these are butterflies for Hongjun specifically I really thought about like what kind of imagery came to my mind when I thought about him with him being my ult of ults and everything like that and it was butterflies which explains my nails I did them myself they're kind of terrible but not as terrible as they could be so let's let's not be too hard on Chai but yes yeah, so I wanted to get butterflies and stars for him because that's kind of the aesthetic that I want for his front page I also have tons and tons and tons of Hangul stickers 
So just whatever hangul I want to put on there. I have different colors, different sizes. Um, all of these I got from Etsy. I do not remember the Etsy shop name. It was kind of a long time ago, but I have hangul stickers. Um, this is stickers that I got just from like different groups throughout the year. So these are deco stickers that the boys came out with. And I was like, there's like a whole pirate ship on here and like bubbles and cute stars and things. And I was like, these might be really useful. Plus they have like Roman letters, English. They have English letters. I don't know. <laughs> so I was like, just in case I want to write something in English, like I can. And then here's some in hyphen stickers. I don't think I'm going to use them for this purpose, but they're stored with these in my little sticker storage thing. I also have some cute star stickers and then just like a mess of freebies. I deco a lot using freebies. So like if you're a person that sends me freebies, like shout out to you, you're the real one. Like especially whoever sent me this. This is gonna be the focal point of this binder because I love Hong Jun with red hair so, so very much. So this is gonna be the focal point. He might go on the back. I don't know, I have a lot to figure out. I'm really bad with these type of things. And I have like that type of anxiety where you never want to stick a sticker because then you're like, what if I want to move the sticker? I can't, it's stuck forever. I have that type of anxiety. So I've literally just been putting this off because I don't want to stick the stickers. But I'm like, okay, I have already ordered broadcast cards for him. You didn't hear that from me. So like they're going to need a place to go when they get here because I can't just have them like out in the open. Like, no. So I was like, okay, we need to sit down and do this. So um, the rest of this will most likely be voiceover. I'm gonna try to give you guys, I get a lot of questions about collecting ATs, especially OTA ATs. So I wanna try to answer all of your questions. So enough rambling for me. I'm gonna start the deco and voiceover shy. Hello everybody, voiceover shy from the future here. How are you? Well, okay. I am going to do my best to explain, first of all, what the heck is going on in the deco because it's, it's literally just all silence. And then also to give you my collection tips. Let's get started. First things first, um, the number one tip that I would give you if you wanted to start collecting ATs or if you already kind of collect them but you want to collect them more seriously would be to know what you want, okay? It is very, very, ATs has so many cards and there's an infinite number of ways to collect. So if you don't know what you want out of your collection, what you want your collection to look like, what you're going towards, it'll be really hard to decide what to collect as you're doing it. You'll just be like picking up random cards and nothing will make sense. And then your collection will look kind of disorganized and chaotic, which I doubt is what you would want. The number one tip that I would give would be to know what you want. So if you're like, okay, um, I want to collect two members and I want to collect only album cards, that's great. Um, I would advise you to go look at a template and see, you know, how many cards they have per era and how you're going to want to organize it. Because if you decide, oh, I only want to collect two members and then like you get the cards and they don't fit right on a nine pocket page or a four pocket, if you're doing an A5, then yeah, that's something you're going to need to plan for ahead of time. So definitely number one tip would be know what you want and more importantly, what you don't want. So the second tip leading into that is to set a budget and stick to it, which is really honestly hilarious coming from me, but I'm trying to help you be better than me. Okay, let's all be better than shy. AATs can get quite expensive very, 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 very quickly. And so if you don't set a budget and you're just like, I want this card and you don't really look into how much it normally goes for, where it came from and things like that, um, you will more than likely end up overpaying for it. Um, and that's unfortunate. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. I don't want that for any of us. I wish people would just sell things for a decent price, but wishes and hopes, you know? <laughs> Yes, it's best to just be like, okay, I want this card, but I will not pay more than X amount for it. 
But it's also important to know uh, the worth of the card because you can be like, okay, I want a Tokopedia card and I won't pay more than $20 for it. I mean, you can say that until the cows come home, but good luck on that because those cards, if you do not know, very easily go from 80 to less price line. I don't like calling it popular line and unpopular line, so we're going to say high price line and normal price line. <laughs> So for normal price line, Tokopedia cards are about $80. For high price line, you're looking at $200. And that, that's just the name of the game on that one. So set a budget, stick to it, but also know the market price of the cards that you're looking at would be my second tip. My third tip for you new a or more serious a is to know the price of your member and know the price of each era. I know that is a lot to ask. It's a lot of research to do. But there, um, I'm sure with every group, there's, of course, member pricing. We, we all know. We all hate it, whatever. But it's not a problem that we can fix. That's Korea. So until Korea stops, that's just going to be the way it is. Know the price, the average price that your member goes for. And then it's also important to know the price of the era for the card that you're looking for. Because um, as an OT8 collector, I have to keep track of eight prices <laughs> and all the eras, and it is a whole lot. So if you ever need help, please feel free to just DM me on Instagram. Like any ATN can always DM me and I will be happy to help you. But yes, if I was looking for a card, let's say I was looking for um, a rare card. Let's say I wanted a Treasure Cafe card for no reason. I would have to note that Treasure Cafe cards came out in Wave Illusion era, which was the third album for ATs. So that's not a super expensive era, honestly. It's higher now because, you know, it's in the past like 16,000 albums ago. Uh, but it's not the highest price era that ATs has. So just knowing that will help you. And then also if I was looking for a Treasure Cafe card of Jong O, which I could maybe get for, you know, 60, maybe $80, it'd be way different than looking for a Treasure Cafe card of San, which can easily go for about 150. So just know both the era price and your members price, and that'll just save you a whole lot of headaches. So now, you know, if you see you know, a Jongo card being listed for San prices, you're like, okay, wait a minute. No, no, no. And I know, I know, I'm probably going to get a comment like, they should all be the same price. I understand that. Okay. As an OTA collector, I literally want that more than anyone, more than anybody. But again, wishes and hopes. So it's just something you kind of have to accept as well with ATs, which... <laughs> Leads us into our next point. Um, what era should you start collecting in? If all the areas have different prices and you're not really familiar, my advice is to start with Fever 2 specifically. Fever 2 was um, the biggest explosion of fan signs known to mankind. <laughs> but also just like 80s, that was our biggest era of fan signs. Even Fever 3 had less fan signs than Fever 2. So what happens when there's a lot of fan signs is that we have to continue to buy albums to get the fan sign cards and that drives down the price of the album cards. So any era that has a lot, a lot, a lot of fan signs will then have cheaper album cards. Fever 2 cards currently, as I'm filming this, <laughs> go for around like three to four dollars each for every member. That being said, some members will sell out faster than other members because, you know, supply and demand. And, you know, people like to say, oh, that shouldn't apply to K-pop. It applies to everything in life. I'm sorry to tell you, anything that involves money is subject to supply and demand. I hate to be, you know, the person to tell you Santa Claus doesn't exist, but I have to do it. I'm trying to help you. I'm really trying to help you. So yes, some members will sell it faster, but I've seen the Golems really don't member price. They will sell everything for the same price. They just want it gone. Okay. They don't care who claims what. They just want it gone. 
So a lot of times if you collect a member who is not high price line and you collect a member who is high price line, the Golms will give an incentive to those people and be like, hey, if you take this member off of my hands, then I'll sell, I'll give you priority sale. They won't like discount it or anything like that, but you'll be more likely to get your claims when you ask for them than if you were like, I just want all high price line members like... Can be, and it's not because they can't sell the other members or don't want to or whatever, whatever. It's just because when you're hosting that many goes and you have so many cards, you honestly can't afford to hang on to them for so long to get them sold to the people who want to give them a good home and everything like that. So when they do that, it's not out of any malicious spite or because they don't like a member or they think a member is worth less than another member. It is sheerly just because they need to get all of these cards cleared out so that way they can host goes for the new fan signs because the fan signs are never ending and so they just need to get the cards cleared out so that way they can bring in new cards. It is literally just as simple as that. I've seen a lot of posts about um people getting upset. They're like, oh, they didn't uh, give me the San card I wanted because somebody else was buying Yo Song and San and they gave them my claim even though I asked first. And I'm like, because they prioritize people who one, buy more or two, buy members that take longer to okay, sell. Okay, so I went ahead and did the back cover off camera just because like I really basically did the same thing. So um, what I did was put double-sided tape all around um, the borders just to make sure that like if the glue didn't hold or something, this wouldn't start peeling up. And then I put glue in the center um, to hold it to this. And then I did let these dry for just a little bit just to make sure like the glue was setting in and like the edges looked okay. I did also like cut off um, the corners because... These pages have um, square corners and the binder covers were round corners. And so I just went ahead and rounded the corners with some scissors. So now I have the front and the back covers all ready to start decoing. Okay, so my next tip for you is to make a teeny friends. Make all the a teeny friends. You see an a teeny, hunt them down. No, I'm just kidding. Please don't do that. <laughs> But do make a teeny friends, go on Instagram. If you do a lot of ATs, trades, sales, whatever, you'll just run across a lot of a teeny. Make friends with them. Say something nice. Be polite. Things like that. Because a teeny are very good about helping other a teeny. We tend to have a lot of people who are just like in the a teeny community to buy stuff and then resell it at a higher price. We get a lot of resellers, scalpers, whatever you want to call them. So your best bet is to find the people that are actively buying, selling, trading everything um, in the at &E community, and those are true at &E. <laughs> and then they will help you find stuff. And even better than that, because um, I've been tagged on a bunch of stuff that is just like, hey, I saw this on your wish list once. I didn't have it, but I did just see a post put up about it. And I'm like, you are <laughs> literally my savior. Like, I love you. But not only will um, people do that for you, but also um, if you're really good friends or if you're just really kind and they know you're looking for something, in the event that they go to sell said thing, like sometimes people get into collections, they're like, okay, I really cannot afford to sustain three members. So you'll see people drop, not their whole collection, but they'll drop a member. And so if they know that you collect that member, they'll... DM you and be like, hey, I'm gonna drop my Uno collection. Is there anything you want before I, you know, put it up for the hyenas? <laughs> so, I mean, that is just gonna be super helpful for you to, again, buy from another at &E. I still remember, story time with Shy, that when I first started collecting back before Fever 1 in Epilogue era, there was an at &E named Hannah. God bless you, Hannah. Don't know where you are. She's not dead. Like I said it like she was dead. She was not dead. <laughs> I still follow her on Instagram. She's not dead. <laughs> Can you tell I'm bad at this? Anyway, so yes, Hannah was an a who um, 
moved and had to sell off her collection because she couldn't take it with her. And she was one of the people that DM'd me and was like, hey, um, I know you collect 80s. Do you want any of this stuff before I list it? I bought so much from Hannah, so much stuff that was honestly rare cards at this point that I didn't know. I literally just bought everything because it was 80s. <laughs> I was like, I'll take it all. Take everything, Hannah. Um, I didn't actually buy it all because at that point I was still delusional and was like, I'm just going to collect Hong June. <laughs> no, that was dumb. I was dumb. Um, so I didn't buy everything. And that's like one of the biggest regrets of my life, <laughs> as well as just not collecting ATs from debut. But we're not here to talk about my regrets. But yes, ATD friends will help you. At some point, I'm sure an ATD will help you. Even if I'm that ATD. Again, if you have any questions, if you see something and you're like, is this a good price? I don't know. I don't feel like researching it. I am full of ATs knowledge. That's all I know in life is math and ATs. So just go ahead and slide in my DMs. I'm giving you full permission. Slide in and be like, Shy, I saw this card for $35. Is it a good deal? Should I buy it? And I'll be like, Maybe. I don't know. It depends on the card. <laughs> but yes, I'm happy to help you. There are tons of a that would be happy to help you. So definitely, if you're thinking about collecting a a huge tip would be to make all the a friends. Every single a make them your friend. Not forcefully. Like, assault's not great, kids. Don't do that. But yes, the next tip, um, next to making... ATNE friends, <laughs> probably more importantly, you need to find a good goal. There's a ton of good ATs, um, goals, uh, or group order managers, if you don't know what that stands for, GOM, that uh, basically host group orders to help us save on shipping, to help with sorting, to help with life, help with your mental sanity, in my case. <laughs> um, and there's all, there most of them are very, very good. There's only been a few times that I've run across somebody that was just like, I kind of want to set them on fire, but like in a, in a non death threat way, you know, but, um, definitely find a good goal. Um, I, if you, again, if you need help with that, just let me know. I can point you in a direction, um, tell you my experiences with them, tell you their style. Cause each group order manager has their own style. Some people are more focused on savings than time. Some people value time over like saving a few dollars. And so it really is just dependent on your preference. If you're like, I'm out to collect all I want to collect and save as much money as possible, then it's important for you to find a group order manager who also shares that goal. Because if you get one who's like, I want to get us the merch as fast as possible, you know, spend expenses will spare no expenses, that's not really going to align with the way that you want to collect. And so you're going to think like, oh, they're a bad group order manager when they're not bad. They just um, aren't focused on the things that or don't have the priorities that you have. Like, of course, we all want to save money in general, but there's way to save more money. But it just generally takes more time. Since I collect OT8, I fall in that category. My goal recently just quit. <laughs> I am literally infinitely sad about it. She got bullied to the point into quitting, but that's, again, another story. But she was definitely one that was like, okay, we're not going to get this stuff for like four or five months, but we are not paying a penny extra. <laughs> and when I have to buy eight of everything, I, I need all the pennies, guys. I need all the pennies. So I didn't mind. Um, she packages really, really well, so I never had a problem with anything like that, but just people had an issue with um, how much time it took for them to get their things, not realizing that is her style. So I just want people to be aware that not every group order manager is going to do things the same way. And that doesn't make them bad. That doesn't make you right, them wrong, anything like that. It's just a difference in priorities. And you need to know that going in. So definitely find a goal that suits your style. Research them. I know literally... All of them. Okay, probably not all of them, but like a good, a good majority. So if there's anybody that you're like, hmm, I don't know anything about this person who can ask me. It's literally me. Ask me anything. I'm trying to help you. I really want to help you. I want more good ATE in the community. So anything I can do to help, I will do to help. <laughs> 
Okay, off of my soapbox we go and on to the next tip, which is do not, I repeat, do not sell anything for a price that you would not like to pay. Okay? Okay. Now, that doesn't apply to things where the thing was expensive and you're selling it because you changed your mind about it and you're like, no, I thought I wanted this and I bought it, but actually I don't want it and you're selling it for the price you paid. That is totally fine. And if somebody wants to take on that cost, that is totally up to them. You know, that's whatever. What I more have an issue with and everybody has an issue with is people will buy things. Um, let's say you got an album card and you you got it for like $8 and then they have it and they're like, okay, I don't want to collect this member anymore. Let's sell it. And then they sell that same card that they got for eight for $32. And you're like, that is an album card, ma'am. Like this is a Wendy's. No, sit down, have several seats. Do not sell things for a price that you would not like to pay. Would you like to pay $32 for an album card? I have a hard time believing anybody is raising their hand right now. So don't sell for that. Don't buy things that are crazy priced and don't sell things for a crazy price. Simple as that. Of course, you can always add in any supplies, shipping, of course, whatever. But there's a lot of price gouging going on in the community and it's frustrating for a lot of people, including me. So I would just highly recommend you not join that crowd and just don't sell for crazy prices. Don't buy for crazy prices. All right, this next tip will be the only time I encourage stalking. <laughs> so the next tip is to stalk the Instagram hashtag, the trade hashtag, the sale hashtag, whatever you're looking for, stalk that hashtag. Um, a and are quite active on Instagram and they post a lot of stuff by the minute. So a lot of my collection... And the reason why I was able to collect, back collect so quickly was that literally every five minutes I would refresh the hashtag, sometimes more than that. And I literally did that day and night, like I never slept. <laughs> it was not a healthy habit. But um, people would post album cards in the middle of the night and then they would be a really good price. They'd be like six or seven dollars. And so, of course, those will go quickly. So... Um, being the first one to comment or DM or whatever the instructions on the post say, always follow the instructions, kids, uh, was a huge factor into how I was able to collect OT8, back collect them, and not go broke. I don't stock the hashtag as much anymore because I don't have nearly as much to back collect. I say as ATs has dropped to whole era's worth of cards at once and I'm high key struggling but stalking the hashtag will definitely help you you'll be able to find things for a better price that way because if you just check the hashtag the the posts that are left honestly are the ones that are not a great price they might not be um like super overpriced or anything like that but they're not the best prices that you can get. So if you're like, okay, I want to stick to my budget and I want to find this card, that would be the number one place is Instagram. And again, just stalk that hashtag. Do not let it breathe. Do not give it any space. Keep staring it right in its eyeballs, even when it's uncomfortable. Okay, this, what? <laughs> but yes, just stay in the hashtag. Keep refreshing it. Um, since I have an iPad and a phone, I can just keep Instagram open on my iPad and just refresh it and like still have my phone free and everything like that. But um, if you can, like keep a tab open on your computer, use a second phone. I don't know. You could have like a burner phone. I don't know your life. Um, keep it on your iPad. Just keep the hashtag open. And whenever you like look at your phone or computer burner phone, iPad, just refresh the hashtag, see what what new thing has popped up. That is, yeah, the best way to back collect older album cards. And the next tip is um, 
just a mindfulness one, one to help your sanity is to just know and realize, because I feel like sometimes we can get a little caught up in collecting, especially me. I'm really, I get hyper-focused about stuff and I'm like, I need this card now. Um, But it's just good to take a break sometimes and relax and remember all cards will come around again. This card and this hashtag or on this post or whatever is not the last card there is. It's not the only one that were that will ever be. So if you find a card and you're you've been waiting forever for that card, but it's like double your budget, don't buy it. I know it sounds terrible to let the cards you've been looking for go. Don't buy it. Trust me, it will come around again. There's been so many times that I've purchased a card because I've been looking for it for like a month or something and I haven't seen it and it's the first one to pop up. And um, so I buy it, even though it's not in the budget that I set for myself. And there has not been a singular time um, that I have not found that card again in the hashtag for a better price. So take it from me. If anything, just please remember that all cards will come around again. They all will rare or not. They will come around again. Okay. I think I am done with the front cover I have a tendency to go overboard, especially with like stickers, especially when they're like shiny, like love it. But I think like right here, this is good. (laughs) So we are going to stop decoing. That's the real issue is knowing when to stop. (laughs) So I think we're going to stop right here for the front cover. And then we are going to... Do the back cover, which this one I really wanted like kind of like a light concept. Um, And then, of course, like his pirate ship thing sailing into the dark concept. And in the back, I want to create a somewhat darker concept for him. So let's see what I can do. So don't feel like you have to buy something and blow your budget or that you have to collect quickly because it's right here right now. Just stay within your means, stay on your budget, um, keep with your goals, and know that it will come back and it's not going to be the last one. I know it sounds simple and like, oh yeah, we all know, but when you're really deep into collecting and you get into that mentality of looking for something, it, something so simple like that can honestly escape your mind. So I really just want to put that out there for anybody who's struggling with ATs right now, or who's thinking about going to collect ATs at any stage of collecting. Just remember that. So right about now, if you're a new ATini, you're probably saying, well, Shy, you're telling me all of these things about prices and the differences and all of that. How would I know which members are going to be harder to collect than others? Don't worry, I got you. So, because like this is kind of like hard information to find just outright for any group I've noticed. So, I'll just I'll just go ahead and tell you guys. <laughs> so, the number one hardest to collect member currently is Songhua. Songhua is so popular everywhere. So you really, you get no breaks with him. (laughs) Like if you, it's really hard to claim him in a go because he gets, his slots get taken very, very quickly. Um, His cards are always the very first to sell out anywhere that they're posted. Um, So he's definitely, I would say, number one hardest to collect. Um, That being said, if your bias is San, I have unfortunate news for you. He is almost equally as hard to collect. He's a tad bit easier, I would just say, um, sadly, because a lot of people have stopped collecting him recently. So he's become a bit easier to collect. He doesn't get claimed as fast. I've found his cards in stock at a couple of places. But he's he's still pretty difficult, especially his older cards. They're incredibly overpriced most of the time. So you'd have to try to find a trade and yeah. So after that, it's kind of a tie between Hongjun and Wuyong. 
The Wamis go hard. <laughs> That's Woo Young's fan club. All the AT's members have their own fan club. Hong Jun's is super hard to say. It's Hong Pyong Man. Like what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> but Hong Jun and Woo Young are, I would just say, hard mode. Like they're pretty hard to collect because they have a lot of collectors. Their cards um, are more reasonably priced. You'll find them pretty decently. It's just finding them that can become the trouble just because they do have a lot of collectors. So there's less people willing to trade them away. After that, um, everybody else is pretty easy to collect. So there's half of ATs that's kind of difficult. Uh, well, actually, there's two members of ATs that are incredibly difficult Two that are just kind of difficult. And then the rest are honestly pretty easy. If your bias is Yuno, Mingi, Jongo, or Yosang, congratulations. Clap it up for yourself. You are on team easy. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I enjoy collecting them the most. Like, as an OT8 collector, collecting half of ATs is incredibly stressful. And then the other half is just like, a breeze like that's that's where the joy comes in for me <laughs> like I love collecting all of them but seriously one half is just insane like it's nightmare mode sometimes <laughs> trying to find their cards for a reasonable price or trying to claim them in a go um but yes for the other half of 80s like truly you'll have a lot of fun collecting them their cards are widely available everywhere and people are more likely to have trades up for them. So just clap it up for yourself if you pick somebody on Team Easy. Like, I know nobody can really help their bias and you're gonna want to collect your bias, but it just makes it all the better when your bias is easy to collect, I would say. But in the case that you have a more difficult bias to collect, my number one tip would be to join a go and claim their spot in a go and that is going to help you immensely and finally for the last tip my last tip that I have for you guys is um don't ignore red flags buying on Instagram is can be great and wonderful and everything like that because people can sell things for a lot cheaper because they don't have to pay eBay fees or Mercari fees or, you know, shipping and all of that can be a lot cheaper because we can just use stamped shipping instead of having to pay for tract, which is a, an added cost. But with that convenience and with these lower prices and things like that um, comes a lot of safety and trust issues. So never ignore the red flags. And it's I know it can be super hard when you're like, OK, yes, I finally found this card. I've been looking for it for two months. I finally found it in my budget. And then nothing is worse and as when that person is just so shady it's just so shady the video they sent you was grainy and they sent it super fast and you couldn't really see the card and your address doesn't look right things like that just never ignore the red flags ask for more videos ask for more proof go through their proof highlights Make sure that their proofs are clickable, that you can see both usernames, like the person who posted the proof and, you know, theirs receiving it. Make sure that their ad is on the card somewhere. You know, just um, do your due diligence uh, when you're dealing with people on Instagram in general. <laughs> Because I don't want any of you to get scammed. And because we have a lot of scalpers and resellers, there's also a lot of people out there to take advantage of people's trust in this community and scam people. I don't think I've ever been scammed from an ATS card. I've only had one confirmed scan. That's... Story time which I get, I guess. <laughs> I've only been confirmed scammed once, and it was for an in-hyphen trade. <laughs> so, like, that was terrible. I want my Sung Hoon back. 
person, if you're out there, I want my Sung Hoon back. <laughs> but yes, I've only been like confirmed scam from like a mass scammer once. But um, definitely do your due diligence and don't get scammed. Protect yourself. Protect your information. Don't send your address until um, everything's been confirmed and everything like that. Don't send money until you're sure that the person has the card or that you have proof that a card that they are selling you is actually on the way for things like that. But yes, definitely do your due diligence and do not ever ignore red flags. Especially if somebody's just talking to you crazy, don't don't deal with that. No. Don't ignore any red flags that they give you. Just don't do it. It's not worth being scammed for that card. Okay, you might have found it in a good price, but if you never receive the card, it's not actually a good price. So don't ignore the red flags. Just don't do it. Okay, that was all of the tips that I had based on the questions that I've gotten so far. If you have more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will either answer them in another video if there's a lot of questions or I'll just answer you directly if it's just if it's just one lone question down there. Let's watch me struggle to decorate in a five binder. Thanks for listening, guys. I've done it. I think we done did it. So for the front cover, like I said, I really wanted to go with like a light concept. I absolutely love Hong Joon with red hair. It's my absolute favorite hair color besides pink, of course, but we didn't have any photos of that. Um, so I really wanted to like make it like his red hair kind of light concept. And then the back cover I wanted it kind of more dark concept it's not super dark it's still like pastels and everything like that um but I really wanted to use like the butterflies that he's really known for so I put his name Kim Hong Joon here and then I put Nabi which means butterfly um and just kind of I just placed a lot of stickers as I as I saw fit <laughs> basically so this is my front and back cover for his new A4 binder. So let's put them in and see how they look. Okay, so I slid like the front and the back covers like inside these little pockets just so like when I open it, it'll just like open the whole thing. I don't know if I'll keep it like that, but I wanted to see like how it would look. So this is what my front cover looks like and this is what my back cover looks like. Honestly, I'm super in love with it. Like, I'm not the best deco person out there. Um, I tend to not have too much creativity, but I think I really, really like this binder. I just threw a couple of the four pocket pages in there just so that it would, like, be a little bit bulkier. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to put anything in here until I do my storing PCs video. So now you'll be in the know and not be like, where the heck did this binder come from? <laughs> she has never had an A5 binder. So that is going to be all for Deco with Shy today. I hope you guys really like this series because I have a lot of things to Deco. <laughs> so until the next time, my ult of ults makes me make a whole entire binder just for him.